Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, but this time it is going to be on a Pendulum Magician deck profile for December 2017. Now, this is a deck that's relatively cheap right now. If you want to pick it up and invest in it, it is a very good competitive option, as well as it's something you probably want to have your hands on going into 2018, because Heavy Metal Foe's Electromite is confirmed as an import in the Extreme Force pack coming out early February. And even though there is a ban list potentially around the corner, they have to do a lot of hits to this deck to make it to where that card doesn't still keep this deck as a tier 1 status deck. Because that card, that Link Monster, is actually just pretty absurd for what it does for Pendulum decks in general. And this is arguably the best Pendulum engine that we have access to. But anyway, uh, this is a list that I've been playing around with. Uh, me and a friend were messing around with it. Uh, this is actually pretty close to the list that he played at ARG Orlando. Uh, but this is, uh, he was playing my deck and my cards. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this is a list that I've been messing around with as well. Uh, and I really like it. It uh, has some tech choices in it. Uh, as per usual, my pendulum lists usually always play some weird and wonky cards if I have the capability of doing so. But for pretty good theoretical reasons. So anyway, without further ado, the deck list is 40 cards. It starts out with Triple Perform Pal Skullcrabat Joker, Triple Wisdom Eye Magician, Triple Harmonizing Magician, Triple Double Iris Magician, Triple Black Fang Magician, Triple Purple Poison Magician, and two Oaf Dragon Magicians. So uh, the only thing that's really not standard amongst these is the uh, Double Oaf. Most people play either zero or one. Uh, this is a card you really just always kind of want to have in your scale because it is a card that allows you to just continuously add back your Harmonizing or your Wisdomize turn after turn which allows you to play around uh, evenly matched. Like, if you get evenly matched and you have a Wisdom Eye that you keep have you keep recycling back to your hand every turn, uh, it's a much less impactful uh, evenly matched against you. But it's a lot of Magician cards. It's legit Skullcrabat Joker plus 17 Magician cards. Uh, but then for other monsters, uh, two copies of Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerer. This is just a card to search off Duelist Alliance uh, or Joker if you've already got, like, Double Iris or whatever. Uh, and it allows you to pop your double iris turn one to search for your trap or your spell. Uh, just trigger more of your searches and stuff. Get you get you into a string of plays where you're normal summoning Skullcrabat Joker every turn, and that's usually the game plan that you want to be going down. Now, for non-pendulum monsters in the deck, I'm playing three copies of Mist Valley Apex Avion. Big chicken, big bird. Big bird is always the truth. Uh, this card is always a card that I try to play in any pendulum deck that can feasibly support it. Uh, it's, you know, got some pros and it's got some cons. The pros, in my opinion, very heavily outweigh the cons. Uh, specifically, this card just does a lot in simplified game states, and Pendulum Magicians is a deck that doesn't really do a lot in terms of flashy plays, but it does those plays very consistently, because so much of your deck is just searching cards and all that sort of stuff, and outside of the trap card, this deck doesn't have that much reactive play structuring to it. Uh, and Apex Avion just kind of fills that void. Uh, there's not really much that you'd be playing in place of these, um, other than just like subpar other options like Astrograph Sorcerers or Wavering Eyes or Pendulum Calls or something. I would rather play something that's a lot more high impact. Uh, like I said, the card does have pros and cons, uh, but the pros of this card are like really, really big and impactful. Like when you stick this on the board, it just means that you don't have to worry about evenly matched anymore, and that's like the biggest detriment to this entire deck. Uh, Pendulum Magicians really struggles hard against evenly matched. Uh, in the mirror match, also, it keeps your, you know, opponent from being able to wavering eyes you for huge amounts of advantage. Um, and, like, it just keeps bouncing itself to your hand to summon every turn. And so, like, this allows you to play through a lot of simplified board states and stuff. It's a, it's a card that I'm always a huge fan of in any pendulum deck that can support it, like Metal Foes or Magicians. Any, any pendulum deck that always puts out a scale that's usually between, like, 1 to 8 or, like, 2 to 8 or something. Anything that can summon this almost every time it has a pendulum scale up is a card that I try to play this in, and it's usually always the best card in my deck because you just flop it on the board, and it's huge. It's a huge body. 2700 is a very respectable big body uh, in its own right, but also the fact that it just negates cards and it just puts itself back in your hand uh, is fantastic as well, and the more of these that you get to as games progress, uh, the better off your game plan ends up being, and like I said, it's basically just like... You could play things like Solemn Scolding and stuff like that to like deal with evenly matched. You could play Mind Crush. You could play Artifact Lancia. 
But this card is much more proactive than any of those cards because it's got attack stats, um, and it's a card that you can negate anything with. Uh, so, like, if your opponent is, you know, doing stuff that doesn't involve evenly matched, you can negate your opponent's, like, double helixes and stuff like that. This is 100% a card I always advocate use of in any Pendulum deck. It's always just the, the Phoenix Flarex secret spice of any Pendulum deck is Apex Avion. This is one of my favorite cards to play in any Pendulum variant that can feasibly support it, as I've already said. But other than that, the only other monsters in the main deck are just hand traps, uh, double max, or uh, not double max C, that's not allowed, one max C, double droll and lock, and triple ash blossom. Uh, you could play different ratios if you want to, but ultimately these are what I've found to be the best uh, in terms of probability of drawing them and all that sort of stuff. With the Apex Avions on the list as well, I didn't want to max out on more hand traps because, uh, because then you start getting into more areas of having cards that aren't really engine pieces. Uh, the biggest thing with this deck is that you, uh, you're you already maxing out on all the Magician cards uh, that are good. You're maxing out on all the ones that are playable and that don't, you know, have weird situations that ha force them to be played in weird ways like Astrograph Sorcerer and Pendulum Call just gets Ash Blossomed and you want to cry. Uh, so, like, those cards aren't in the list, so, like, that's why there's room for, like, Apex Avion and these cards. And I haven't been having a problem without having Pendulum Call or anything like that. Like, most people play one of that card. Um, and it's just, it's not really that ideal right now with everyone playing, like, Droll and Locks, everybody playing <laughs> Ash Blossoms, like, there's, there's just not a lot going for Pendulum Call as a card right now, uh, to make it worthwhile, but that was all the monsters. For the spells, uh, two Pot of Desires, uh, you don't really mind if this card gets Ash, you really care about, you know, your... You care about Pendulum Call getting Ash because that was a minus one. You discarded a card for that. Uh, and then Upstart Goblin just for draw cards and consistency enablers. Uh, triple Duelist Alliance to search for your Double Iris for your Pendulum Graph Spells and Traps for your uh, Pendulum Sorcerer. Uh, pretty self-exclamatory. And then only one copy of Star Pendulum Graph. Uh, this card is fairly easily accessible. You don't really need more than one. That's, that's when you start getting into bricky situations. Um, you don't really need more than one of this card. It's something that you just search offhand uh, with Pendulum Sorcerer being able to trigger your double iris turn one uh, and stuff like that. And then the only two traps in the deck are two copies of Time Pendulum Graph. Uh, you play more of this than uh, Star Pendulum Graph because your opponent is going to be incentivized to out this card. Um, and also in uh, situations when your opponent like flips anti-spell on you in games two and three, you want to be able to draw onto this card so you can like summon a magician and set this card and out the anti-spell. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, it just makes the deck overall just a little bit stronger. Uh, but that is a 40 card main deck, 39 if you're counting upstart. Uh, and then moving on to the extra deck we go. So, I don't have a lot to explain with this deck, and so this deck profile is going a lot quicker than some of my other ones, like World Chalice and shit. Because it's, it's not something I have to explain a lot outside of the weird things like Miss Valley, Apex, Avion. Uh, but anyway, the only link monster is Deco Talker. You could play a Akashic Magician if you really wanted to find the space for it. Um, it's, funnily enough, a target that can be revived off of a Black Fang Magician, so that's neat. Uh, but Decode Talker, uh, one Beals, one Ignister, two Cyframe Lord Omegas, uh, the entire Supreme King package, uh, Supreme King Dragon, of, uh, Clear Wing, Starving Venom, and Dark Rebellion. Uh, one Performer Pal, or not Performer Pal, Perform Age Trapeze Magician. Uh, this card just opens up game shots, especially with cards that are huge, like Apex Avion. Uh, like, you just make Apex Avion attack twice, and it's just over. Um, because Apex Avion is in the list, you are able to do things like that. Uh, also, Deco Talker plus this is game, uh, because you put this in the zone, Deco Talker is pointing to, Deco Talker becomes 28. You make that attack twice, and that's 28, 28, 25. Uh, so that's game as well, uh, because that's what? 28, 28, 25, that's, uh, that's 56 plus 25? Yeah. Um... But carrying on, one uh, Time Star Magician, two Baguskas, uh, two Baguskas because with Baguska you can make it turn one, um, and then the second turn of your game plan you make the Baguska into a Decode Talker. Um, you Pendulum two from your extra deck, and link with the Baguska and um, and your two monsters into Decode Talker, and then you uh, make another Baguska um, after you've made your entire uh, play. But Tornado Dragon, Diamond Dire Wolf. And Abyss Dweller rounds out the entirety of this extra deck. So this deck is pretty self-exclamatory, pretty uh, pretty easy to understand. As you might be able to tell, I've got some printed out proxies, uh, but that's because I borrow these cards from people whenever I decide to play these deck, uh, this deck, um, because I own most of it. Uh, so whenever I decide to play it, I just tell people, and I'm like, hey, I want to borrow these cards, and they're like, yeah, cool, sure. 
they're not using these cards anyway because usually they're playing uh, like other decks like Spiral or Trickstar or whatever. Uh, but anyway, that is the deck list. I really like Pendulum Magicians, and like I said, this deck is relatively cheap. Like you can get the entire core of this deck for fairly cheap in terms of like all the Magician monsters, Astrograph Sorcerers, and stuff like that. You can get those for fairly cheap right now, and it's definitely something I would consider investing in if you are going to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh in the early portion of 2018, because like I said, you have access into Heavy Metal Foes Electromite once Extreme Force drops. And even though there is a ban list coming, like I already said, they'd have to do a lot to this deck in order for it to just outright be not playable. Like, they'd probably have to ban this trap card. Even then, the deck could rotate back to Ariadne status because Electromite can trigger that reasonably well. Uh, they'd have to do a bunch of different nonsense. Like, they'd have to, like, limit Harmonizing Magician. Like, there's, the, there's the way too many good cards in this deck. Um, for like what they would need to hit. They'd have to hit Wisdom Eye again, which I don't think they are really planning on doing, or else they would have hit it or Joker like sooner. They'd have to do a lot of hits to make this deck not Tier 1, and even then with Electromite, it probably would still just amalgamate into some form of Tier 1 status hybrid because of the fact that we have so many other good Pendulum engines in the deck that can work with this. Like this deck, this, this engine plays very well with Performa Pals, uh, strangely enough. Uh, and like we're already running Pendulum Sorcerer, but yeah, this is this is the current list that I've been messing around with. Uh, feel free to give it a try. I've been having a lot of positive results with it. Uh, Apex Avion is great. You uh, you just stop playing around evenly matched whenever you have Apex Avion because you just flop it onto the board and you make like Time Star Apex Avion and nonsense, and you're just like, come at me. You you're not gonna deal with my board. Um, and the same thing with Baguska. Like Baguska puts a bunch of uh, pressure on the opponent, but. Anyway, that's basically it for this deck profile. This was actually relatively short. Cool. I like these. Uh, I like doing profiles of these decks that are literally just a shit ton of three ofs that are all pretty self-exclamatory. <laughs> like that's that's awesome. I'd almost wish that I had like thought to put the side deck back together and show it for this because I do actually have side decks for this deck. But basically, the cards that I do side deck in this deck um, are cards like Solemn Scolding, Full Force Virus is another big one because Full Force Virus you can like uh, leave your Purple Poison on the field and uh, tribute it for full force virus that card's great against spiral and trickstar uh that's a card that's in the side deck scolding is in the side deck for when you go first like you can put up uh, apex avion plus scolding boards like you just you needed something to side the hand traps out for uh so like scolding is just one of those cards and uh when you're if your opponent just enters battle phase you just flip up whatever face down time pendulum graph you have just so it's face up and scolding is the only set and then you're just like got you uh, <laughs> there's a bunch of different stuff but this deck is very interesting. It's very fun to play. It's very simple to play as well. It does the it doesn't do much like very powerful plays in terms of things that require multi steps like roll chalice or anything like that. It's not like a combo heavy deck. It's not like a incredible combo deck, but it's a deck that because there's so many three ofs and all these three ofs are searchable and search other th copies of three ofs and stuff like that. It's a deck that does, you should be doing like near the same thing every turn, so it's very consistent. So if you're looking for a deck to get that's cheap and also that's going to help you improve your game plan um, and game play as well, I definitely recommend picking up Pendulum Magicians because it's a very simple and fun deck to play. And like I said, it's a good investment for the future potentially if you're planning on playing in the beginning of 2018 but other than that as always guys thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below as always links as always are in the description down below to my facebook fan page as well as my personal patreon page if you like the content i've been doing and like my videos and want to help support my ability to continue making them the patreon is the best way to do so and even something as little as a dollar a month is a fantastic way to show your support and you'd have my eternal gratitude if that is the route you would like to go down but other than that as i've already said thanks for watching like comment subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do thanks for your time as usual guys and take care. I'll see you in the next video. So now the video is over. As usual, I'd like to give a special thanks to Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, Troy Perkins, Eric Gertson, Tour Guides Guy, and Ringleader, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You guys help out a ton, way more than I could ever express. You have my eternal gratitude, and you guys are forever awesome. Thank you so much for the support, you guys.